floors, ceilings. Some people call them roofs. What separates the two? Well, you might find out, and I don't know about that, with Jim Jeffries. I like to sing me name. Mm. <laughs> bit You've of never fun. done it before. You should keep doing bit it. Bit of fun, bit of fun. I do it just when I greet people. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but so what, what, what stage does this podcast go out? When does this one go out? Uh, uh, today. Oh, today, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's coming oh, out today. Right, right. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be all psyched up. I'll be off to Australia soon, going on my big Australian tour. Fastest selling tour in my career. There's only, there's only one, there's only one uh, city that has every, – everything sold out in like six hours. Yeah. Except for Adelaide. We put on one, two, we, uh, <laughs> everything we put an extra show on, put an extra, oh, we didn't think that would sell that well, put an extra show on. Adelaide's already sold two shows, put an extra show on. It turns out that in Adelaide, only two shows worth of people want to see me. I've, <laughs> I've, uh, I've hit my sealant. Oh, they're not doing well, the third show? My sealant, my ceiling. Oh, ceiling. Yeah, well, for everybody for who's messaged me trying to get tickets, go to Adelaide. Go to Adelaide. <laughs> go to Adelaide. Yeah, yeah, go to Get a road trip, go over to Adelaide. There's tickets available in Adelaide. Everything else is sold out. We've got that thing in Perth where it's like um, uh, there's still seats, but they're individual seats. Mm. Where people are like, I can yeah. get th- get tickets, but only individual Best ones. Best way to see a comedy oh, show. <laughs> isn't that the funnest way? <laughs> like, 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 you know, the only people who buy individual seats at comedy shows are some backpacker who's just gotten into town <laughs> and needs a night out. Or comedy critics. <laughs> oh, yeah. You split up and you're like, where are you sitting? You're like, I'm 16 rows behind you. Okay. And then they laugh and they have to turn around every time. It's like you. <laughs> or you, or you do what you do on a plane. You get in and you go, yeah, my wife's sitting yeah. over there. Yeah. If she could move over with me. So I've had I've had the standard uh, going to Australia. I, oh, I get, oh wait, today's the twenty fifth. Yeah. So you're leaving in two weeks because you have to quarantine, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there you go. So I get I get the I get the standard uh, people coming to see me. Whenever you sell a big tour out, I get the death threats as well. I've been getting death threats since back in the days from the gun control routine. You know that's pretty standard for me. We had a guy on our TV show called Arvi a couple of years ago, and oh fuck me, this guy. He says we edited in the wrong way and all this type of stuff. His answer was the same either way, and. Uh, then he put out a clip and he edited me very, very badly doing exactly what he said that I did. Um, if anyone sees the full footage, they know I did nothing wrong. If you see the full interview, and I have the full interview, and Arvi released the full interview on his Patreon, allegedly the full interview on his Patreon, which uh, was, I think 70 people. I'm yeah. being no, serious. at the time it was like 12, Tw- I think. 12 people. Yeah. So better than ours. Yeah, you're better than ours. <laughs> so about 12 people. He's doing it. something right, guys. <laughs> but, but like there was, there was at the time there was news channels and stuff like that were contacting us saying they were going to do stories and then we just sent them the full interview and then they apologized and didn't run the story. Um, so to anyone who's going to come and try to disrupt the shows or if Harvey's going to come with his camera and act like he's a big news channel all by himself, uh, my answer is the same every single time. Uh, release the full video, Arby. Release the entire interview and let people decide. And if you do release the full interview onto YouTube, not onto Patreon, if you release the full interview onto, onto YouTube, you can come on this podcast and I, w- I will give you airtime. I'll talk to you for 45 minutes and we can discuss what happened. Uh, otherwise, I don't believe I've done anything wrong. Also, oh, I should add this. Release the full interview. Even when he released the full interview on his Patreon <laughs> for the 12 people, there was a cut. There was a cut in there. That would ruin his, uh, probably his personal life, but I'm not going to release that because I'm not a rat. But release the full interview. If there's a cut in that full interview in the beginning or the little bit in the middle, then no no dice. But if you do, come on the podcast. We'll have you on and we'll have a chat. Also, were you something to say for us? I was going to say anything Anything else going on in Australia? No, no. Also, I was about to mention this. <laughs> uh, the reason I was going to Australia was there's a couple of reasons, yeah. right? I wanted to go uh, to Australia to begin with because I was being employed to be on Australia's Got Talent as one of the four judges. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. It was exciting. Channel 7 Australia reached out and they said, oh, we'd like you to be a judge. So I took this time off. Now, when I say took this time off, I had this time off, but I planned to have it in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's why this tour is happening because I went, oh, because the show just, it was. this happens in TV all the time. You get, get an offer. It's like dating. You think, okay, this is great. And then the person just fucking ghosts you. And I wrote back to him and said, okay, well, I've put those days off. I put these days off. I'm ready to go. And then uh, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing. Months passed after they said, oh, no, an offer's coming, an offer's coming. For weeks and weeks and weeks, they said, oh, just sit still. And I took the time off. 
and then they didn't give me the fucking job. Um, now, what <laughs> the weird thing about this is, they said we're going in another direction. So the other day, I fucking log on to find out what other direction they're going on, thinking, oh, they must have some big superstar there. Uh, oh, there's a French chef <laughs> they've decided to use instead of me. That is another direction, though. That, that is, is, a, is a, 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 another <laughs> direction. <laughs> a French, I know, look, he's probably very famous in Australia. I've never heard Has of him. Has anybody cook. ever cooked anything on Australia's well, Got Talent? I, th- I think he's Good a judge question. on, like, MasterChef or one of the cooking shows. Right, which makes which sense. Which makes sense. And they've got yes. him so good at judging a creme brulee. Yeah. We think he can judge anything, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that, be juggling his notes. act. Yeah. I, I always Every think note it. will be like, there's a singer, he's like, mm, needed more salt. Yes. <laughs> like, a dash of nutmeg. Yeah. I always think that if, you're, if you're a comedian in the wing and you're standing there and you're like, oh, and the other two judges are like a, a girl off Neighbours, mm-hmm. you know, which is a soap opera in Australia, a pop star that I've never heard of, and a guy who's like a comic who made movies in Australia who I think is very funny. I'm, 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 not, I'm not bagging on the chef. He's probably a very nice guy. I'm just okay. When when we were doing it, they'd lost one of their uh, famous American people who were meant to be coming out for Australia's Got Talent. I'm not going to dob them in and say who that is, right? But there was a big star from from America who wouldn't quarantine to come over, and that was the excuse they kept giving me for fucking just ignoring me after giving me the offer and then not calling me. They go, "Oh, this lady won't come in. She doesn't want to quarantine. We're trying to figure it out." Then they say to me, "They go, have you got anyone you can suggest?" <laughs> Wait, after they passed on you? No, 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 this is before <laughs> they passed on uh, This yeah. is why I was still Have you got anyone else you can do? So you know who I suggested straight off? Our friend Kerry King from Slayer. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, you, you can say what you want about Kerry King, right? He's one of the nicest fucking so fellas. Nice. Yeah. He's the sweetest guy you'd ever meet. Covered in tattoos, big beard, yeah. all that stuff. But a fucking rock god. Yeah. The yeah. man's a rock god, right? Uh, they decide to go another way from Kerry <laughs> King. Is Slayer big in Australia too? I know they're Slayer's they, they big around the world. world. Yeah, the whole world. Big around the world. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then I suggested another one. I was having dinner with John Cleese, and I just I said, "What the fuck?" I said, "John, do you want to come and host?" Yeah, Australia's Got Talent. Yeah, John Cleese would be awesome. Yeah, no, no, no. They, uh, <laughs> they, this is Australian telly for you all over. No, no, we have a French chef. <laughs> Don't get the guy who's written Oscar-winning fucking movies right. and the parrot sketch and was part of the most famous comedy troupe of all time. We have a French chef, everyone. <laughs> Imagine wow. if you're a, you're a young comedian, you're standing in the wing and you're about to go on, this is me, big break. I hope the French chef likes me. <laughs> <laughs> if you can make the French chef laugh, you can make uh, anyone laugh. I'll, t- I'll tell you this. I lived in, in London for a good fucking 10 years, and I, perf- I performed all over Europe. We did tours of Europe. Yep. Where was the one major Western European country we didn't tour? France. France. We landed there and France. connected. France <laughs> has no interest in watching English-speaking stand-up comedy yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> they have French-speaking comedians they like. They like Jerry Lewis and Eddie Izzard went out there once, but he did the show in fucking French. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the show in French. And, like, if you ever go to Montreal, they have the French week. And I don't – look, I don't want to be mean to any French stand-up comedians, but you're not good. <laughs> you're not good. I've watched your acts. It I sounds know, like you want to be mean. I don't know what you He doesn't you want to. It hurts his heart when he does it, but they're not look, good. This, this breaks my heart to say this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Here I, come I, more death threats. I, I, <laughs> yeah, the, the entire country. Oh, oh, I, the entire of France is coming after you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring, they don't, luckily, they don't bring listen on to the, this. Bring on the resistance. We're going to get a lot of links to mimes this week, I think. I'll tell you what. I did in Intolerant. I did a whole thing about being pissed off by a French guy saying fromage. Yeah, yeah. Not one French complaint. So I will give it to the French. Now, as you said, maybe they're not offended, or maybe it's just we do not watch that yeah, slot. Yeah, exactly. Even That's if someone guessing. forwarded it to him, like this man is taking piss out of us. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, I will not waste time on him. We went to countries I would never think you would do English speaking comedy in, like Hungary. Uh, we like did Czechoslovakia. We, we, we sold out a gig in Slovenia. Yeah, yeah. Even Germany. I didn't think Ger- if you say like who th- who likes to have a good laugh. Germany never would have come to my mind. <laughs> we did. Who likes to have a good time? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we did Berlin, <laughs> Vienna, which is basically <laughs> you know Austria, another. Yeah. yeah, and they they were fun. They had a good time. Oh, yeah. All good. All good. Yeah. And we've done we've done countries in Asia where they've only just watched stand up. We did yeah. uh, South Korea. Yeah. We did shows in. Done gigs in Japan, all this stuff. 
Francis, we've, I've put in offers. Because, <laughs> you know, you know, you go on tour, you take your wife or your girlfriend with you. All right, let's get a fucking show yeah. in Paris. Let's yeah. get a show in Paris. That'll make the wife happy. Yeah, too nah, much romance. Nah, no. not, not interested. Have you tried wearing a beret? <laughs> we've rung every promoter in France. <laughs> the answer is no. no. <laughs> what if you became a ventriloquist and you had like a talking baguette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, baggy. Yeah, yeah, oh, baggy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole show. That I would know, be a routine. You just got to yeah. talk to Buffett. Buffett plays Paris all the time. And, 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 oh, Jimmy Buffett does. Oh, Warren Buffett. Yeah, oh, yeah. Jimmy Buffett. Ah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Warren Buffett doesn't take his TED talk. Wasted away again in cognac field. <laughs> yeah, he does um, an accent. That's uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, he does the accent talk. Now, I'll tell you a funny thing about Australia's Got Talent or America's Got Talent and that type of stuff, right? All those shows. And look, if you if if you want to bring me back, I'm not too proud. I'll do the next season. You just have to ask. Put out the hashtag, Jim Jeffries do Australia's Got Talent. That's, that's a long pretty, that's a long pretty, one. <laughs> pretty catchy. Pretty, pretty catchy. Seconds, yep, rolls off the tongue. How about, how about, you know why I was disappointed? Yeah. Because it's something that I actually think I'd be good at. All these years that I've had people review my comedy all that type of stuff, I would have loved to have sat back in a chair and you get your buzzer. You get to do a golden buzzer. Mm -hmm. You get to do a single buzzer. I was fucking – my my manager in Australia rings me up like this. He goes, oh, i got a weird opportunity for you I don't think you want to do. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, try me. Because all of these weird opportunities that I don't want to do, I would never want to do. He right. always rings me up. It's always some reality show where they want me in the fucking jungle, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, all right, try me. He goes, well, it's pretty mainstream. And he goes, a judge in Australia's got talent. I went, fucking mainstream me I feel like up. You'd, be a, you'd want to be a judge on any show. Well, this is the thing. <laughs> I believe they thought I was too high risk. But they've had Kyle Sanderland, who's like the Howard Stern of Australia, great radio DJ, mm -hmm. a guy I like very much. He did the show. And also out here, you've had Howard Stern right. do it. In Australia, they, they, they bring out American people like, oh, we've got Kelly Osborne. Yeah. Or we've got fucking Jerry Hall well, Jerry Hallow at least was in a group, but they've got people who are fucking didn't do it. Pierce Morgan was a fucking judge of talent. Plus you have comedy and your backgrounds in theater and, and opera. And I have very exact opinions on dance. Yes. I don't like it. It's silly. <laughs> no, so they won't get through it. Finally. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd be fucking buzzing the dances all day. <laughs> You're just moving your body. It's not a job. <laughs> Uh, here's the hashtag. Have Jim Jeffries to be a judge on Amer Australia's Got Talent. H-J-J-T-B-A-J-O-A-G-T. Yeah. Get that trending, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that could work. H-J-J-T-B-A-J-O-A-G-T. We'll put that up put, on the screen. But Australia's Got Talent, Jim Jeffries. That's that's what we need. Yeah. A-G-T, Jim Jeffries. Don't, don't use the hashtag judge oh, yeah. Jim Jeffries because people might take that as instructions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're judging me enough. Judge Jeffries. Oh, that sounds like a good show. Yeah, you so get up there. I, I would have thought it was good. Now, the funny thing is, so this is how far I got down the thing. They had sent me the schedule. I had known my schedule. I thought it was done. It was uh, six weeks of filming. Now, one, three of the days was promo shoots, and then one week was rehearsal. <laughs> and I looked at this rehearsal sheet like, what the fuck's this? Nah. And I'm like, rehearsal? <laughs> It's you're fucking judging things yeah. in a chair. Yeah. You, all you have to do is here's your chair, don't swear. There's your buzzer. There's the golden buzzer. You're only allowed to use that once. Enjoy yourself. Oh, it'll be golden buzzer once, red buzzer many times. Don't swear. Got it. <laughs> You just keep hitting the golden buzzer. Yeah, yeah. We told you one time. Well, you have the, the schedule, the back and it sounds like they don't really have their shit together, so why don't you just show up and see if anybody's dropped out? I, no, I, I, I know who the judges are now. That's how I found out I didn't have the job. I thought I still might have it. <laughs> By the way, in this industry, that's almost always how you find out if you don't have yeah. a job. Yep. Oh, my, Press release. My, <laughs> uh, my NBC show just went away, and you just, well, what happened there? They yeah. built sets. It's just it's a, it's a horrible business. <laughs> But I'm optimistic about working in it again one day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, let's move on. We'll read some ads. We all shop online, and we've all seen the promo code field taunt us at checkout. Like, hey, I'm the promo code. You could be saving savings, but you're not getting them because you're lazy, lazy, lazy bastards. <laughs> honey, use honey, but thanks to honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds in your cut. Look, you're saving money here, people. Like, yeah. think about it. Think about saving money. I, I remember when I was a kid once, I was wa walking past a shop and a $20 bill flew out, right? <laughs> and, it, and it blew down the street and I picked it up 
And I still think about that when I'm sad to this day. <laughs> It was like the best day yeah, ever. Yeah, finding money is yeah, the yeah. best. Yeah, finding money is the best. And this is just finding your money. Yeah. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favourite sites, whether it be Jack's store that buys uh, Grateful Dead headbands or whatever, mm -hmm. .com, um, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. When you, go, when you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do, <coughs> I buy cough drops. On, on with honey. All you have to do is click a pie coupon. Wait a few seconds and a honey searches for coupons. And if it can find uh, and if it can find one for that site, it'll find one for you. I just had one last night that got me 30% off. 30% off? Yeah. What, what type of product do you buy? I was just getting stuff for the house and now I got uh, sixty dollars back. My Ooh. wife buys cat food with it. Yeah, she buys cat food and kitty litter and all that type it just, of stuff. There's a coupon code for almost every single site that you would shop I, on. I get these boxes arrive at the house and I look at my wife and I go, "Honey, did you use honey?" And we <laughs> laugh. Yeah, yeah, I actually. Buy you guys it. do love that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually buy honey with it. Oh, oh wow! wow. Okay. Ooh, yeah. You buy honey with honey, you mm. save some money. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hey -oh. Yeah. honey, 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 <laughs> honey. honey. Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. I never recommend anything I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash IDK. That's joinhoney.com slash IDK. Okay, uh, please welcome our guest this week, Tom Zeiler. G'day, Tom. Thanks for being on the show. And now let's play... Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. All right. Uh, now I'm looking at Tom. Um, he seems to be in a dining room, so it's very, <laughs> very, uh, like, you can't really guess from that. You, uh, you, you like to have guests. Um, uh, I, I've, I've been told that you're a professor that it was slipped that mm -hmm. there was a professor on the show. So I'm going to say, um, okay. When you, as a professor, do you give lectures at a university? Yes, I do. Yes. You, okay. Um, have you written books? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, <laughs> These are Jim's first two questions. No, they're good questions because I may have read the books. Uh, did you read? Did you write the biography of Chevy Chase? <laughs> no, um, okay. So, uh, um, uh, okay, uh, the professor uh, is is you, the profession that you are a professor in. Does it in, does it involve um, the human body? Um, uh, I, I guess indirectly, yes. Oh, right. I would say no. I would say no. I would say no. No, I, I, yeah. no, no I, there I, are I, humans in the yeah. book, but no, it's not. The oh, there's there. humans in the book. Oh, <laughs> now, he's, now you told him. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, are, are you a professor of religious studies? No, I am not. Good, good, good. We'd have to hang up on you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, okay, so you're not a professor of religious study. There's people in the book. I, 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 you're a professor of history. Yes, I am. All right, all right, all right. So very clearly he isn't a professor of religious study. Because <laughs> that book may be made up. Um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, do you, is the topic we're about to talk about war-related? You are correct. All right, is it World War II? You are really correct. All right, boom shakalaka. <laughs> so let me tell you, yesterday I, I told Jim, he said, uh, what are we going to talk about tomorrow? And I said, oh, it's one of the one topics that we made a list at the very beginning of this podcast of lists of things we wanted to talk about. And he just goes, World War II. And Kelly and I were like, no, nah, yeah, no, that's like, not no, it. No, fuck. <laughs> but I did I, tell you. <laughs> I, I, I have watched days and days of World War II documentaries, and I believe that I will recall very little. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, I, and I, I like to put on like a, a good old Nazi documentary as I'm falling to sleep because right. you know my mind wanders to fall asleep, and you, some there's a bit of self hate as, as you go to bed. <laughs> and then you watch it, you watch World War Two, and you go, "Well, I'm not as bad as that guy." And then you have a nice peaceful <laughs> sleep. Uh, here we go. Tom Zeiler is a professor of history and director of the program in international affairs at the University of Colorado Boulder. Right. He specializes in American history, focused on diplomacy. 
economics, baseball, and World War II. I love baseball. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we might have one again, we'll see. <laughs> His books include <laughs> Annihilation, A Global Military History of World War II and Unconditional Defeat, about the last two years of the Pacific War. Uh, a graduate of Emory Univers University and the University of Massachusetts Amherst, or Amherst, I think you're supposed to say, Tom has served as the editor of the Journal of Record of his field, di Diplomatic History, served as a president of the Society for Historians of American Foreign Relations, otherwise known as Schaefer, mm -hmm, yeah, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and been a member of, of the Department of State's Historical Advisory Committee. Tom has also lectured widely abroad, holding Fulbright fellowships in Argentina, Japan, and France. Woo! Yeah, right. there you go. Uh, anything else you want to tell us about you know, like your life or the history of how you got here to be an expert in World War II or to taught about it or... Yeah, that's kind of boring, though. I love Los Angeles, uh, though not the Dodgers. Though no. I really, you don't like the Dodgers? No, I know I'm not. I'm a Braves fan, and I and I and live in Colorado, so we're well, you don't you don't like winners. <laughs> when we talk about the war, you're going to go. Oh, it's a shame the Germans didn't win. <laughs> you want to go for the winning team, mate? Well, it's tough being a Rockies fan too. It's like a high school team, but yes. Um, <laughs> I, I've been to the, I, I've actually, we're, I'm going to be performing in um, Colorado on, I know this was September the 8th at Red Rock. So you're welcome to come if you want to come and have a laugh. Me and Bert Chrysler. Bert Chrysler. Bert Chrysler. <laughs> <Bert Kreischer. Yeah. laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. I shouldn't Bert know his Chevron. Name. Yeah. I, know, I hope it's not one of those shows where one act has to introduce the other. <laughs> <laughs> I actually might go to that show, so. Yeah. I'll meet you if you if you come. And, and the night before, I don't know, like, like I, I have nothing to do with this, but if you're interested, the night before and the night after is Jimmy Buffett. I'm going. Yeah, Jack's coming. To, to, oh, are you going? Yeah, Jack's coming for just him. because <laughs> Jimmy Buffett's on and he thinks that I'll be able to get him tickets to the Buffett because I'm in the night before. We probably will. You said you would. I reckon I could do it. I reckon I can get your ticket into Buffett, mate. All right. I'll be there. All right. Uh, Jack is his assistant that you cannot see right now. He's, you can hear him. Just mm. so you know, if you're confused by voices. Who's mm. also also um, from Atlanta. I am. Oh. Tom is oh. as well. Yeah. 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 Tom was like, man, then I pretend to be interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Tom, here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask Jim everything he thinks he knows about World War II. Mm. And we got some questions to help him along. At the end of that, you're going to grade him 0 through 10, 10 being the best on accuracy of his answers. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. Uh, zero through 10, Red Skull. Mm, yeah, he's the mm, villain. Mm. 11 through 20, Switzerland, because they were neutral. You know, oh, like God. A, Buddy, pick yeah. a side, Switzerland. <laughs> pick a side. 21 through 30, you'll be Captain America. And yes, we know that Australia fought in the war, too. You will definitely remind us of this at some point during the podcast. <laughs> we fought in all wars. Yeah, I know. I know. You, would, you definitely were going to tell us that. Okay. Mm. Uh, here we go. Which event began World War II? Oh, well, that's a pretty loaded question, <laughs> you know, like, like the rise of Hitler or something like that. But the first initial sort of push that actually started the war was uh, the Germans invaded Poland. Okay. What was the treaty that ended World War I that laid some of the unrest that would later explode into World War II? The Treaty of Versailles? Wow. <laughs> Tom's like, wow, I guess I don't need to be uh, here. They, yeah. What was the Treaty of Versailles? It was I'm the going fucking to, I'm going to Red Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it was the it was the end of the it's called the truce. So we'll, okay, we'll wow, you're doing good. You remember more in the documentaries than you thought. Yeah. We're keeping this pretty general too. Let's see how we go. We're keeping no, well, the questions are pretty general because we you know so many details we can get by. Hitler. <laughs> um who, uh, what was the last major attempt at a peaceful resolution with Germany prior to the outbreak of World War II? Oh, I, I, I don't know that. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't know about that. You don't have to be sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what countries were involved? <laughs> like, like, the, like, what like, countries were involved? Yeah. Well, Australia was a big part of it. <laughs> um, okay, okay, so, so what the countries that were involved, well, initially it was Germany and then the, the English tried to stop it and then. The German allies were, um, well, Japan was the one that, and the Italians, Mussolini and all that, were the-, were the What the, were they called? The Italians? No, the group. Uh, oh, the Access of Awesome. Yeah. No, the Access, the access <laughs> of- I love their the, four-chord the, song. Uh, is it the Access of Evil? Or something? Oh, no, that was the fucking Iraq War. I can't remember what they're called. The, 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 you have it. I mean, I, I've said it. Access. Access of- no, nah, just like just say, just say, just say this. Evil. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. So that was Germany, Japan, and Italy. Yeah. And then, and then so so 
So the, the Germans also took over the French and the Dutch and they all joined in with the Germans, although they had their own resistance going on and Austria, obviously, and stuff like that. Um, Hitler was a big fan of uh, England and he, he sort of asked England to, you know, join him. You know, he said, look, we can take the whole thing together. And the English were like, we will fight them on the beaches. We will fight. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. And so the, the, he, he didn't take over the British to begin with. Now, in the end... Um, the, the English actually uh, had an ally in Russia and Stalin and all that type of stuff, and he wasn't a great guy. He had a genocide of the Kulaks that happened uh, during that time as well. So it was England and Russia together? England, Russia, Australia, New Zealand, um, I'm sure there's Canada. Uh, oh, America, towards the end. What were they called? What was that group called? Um, the Latecomers. <laughs> okay. That's one of my pet peeves about Americans. They're always like, hey, we came and bailed your ass out in WW2. And it's like, yeah, you should have come a bit earlier. A no, little no, bit earlier, no, a little, little late there. But that whole group, England, Russia, they had a name too. Oh, um, the, the good guys. Good guys, okay. Yeah. Um, what is Auschwitz? Auschwitz is a uh, concentration camp in Poland where um, maybe the lion's share, well, a lot of Jewish people were killed. There was also Dachau and, and different other little smaller concentration camps around. Yeah. What happened at Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor, um, there was- You're uh, doing good. All the, all, the, all the battleships and stuff. Oh, maybe were, you're not. Tom just shook his head. I don't know. All the battleships, uh, were, all, the American army, were all stationed in Pearl Harbor uh, near Honolulu, and uh, um, they, were, they were bombed unannounced. Um, there was no, there's been theories over the years that, they, that the Americans knew it was going to happen, but the, the history books would say the surprise attack by the Japanese uh, where they killed several people. There's boats that are sunk under there still with bodies in there to this day. And they only got, I think, two aircrafts up to actually defend them. And a couple of people got onto guns on the boats, but it, 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 they were fought with very little resistance because it was a surprise attack. And uh, what, when was that? Oh, um, the year I'm a bit out. I'm, I'm going to say 1941. Who and then okay? Who proclaimed December seventh, nineteen forty one, a date which will live in infamy? And yes, said that. Uh, that was um, uh, the guy in the wheelchair, uh, <laughs> uh, Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Roosevelt, not, okay. not Theodore. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, the the guy he had he had polio as a kid, I think, and he and he was in the wheelchair. Mm. What country lost the most lives in World War Two? Um, that's, that might be a trick question. Cause you want to say like the Germans maybe lost the most or something like that. But I think it might've been, cause we also had an ally in China yeah. as well. Cause the, a lot of people don't know that we fought with it. Cause, cause now in the modern climate, you look at it like we sided with China and Russia who, who have been the boogeyman for many, many decades since then, you know what I mean? And Japan now is, is the place with Hello Kitty and we all, you know, so, uh, I would say, <laughs> I would, I'm going to say China as out of China. left field. I'm going to okay. say China out of left field, but it, it probably will be Germany or something like that. What was the Battle of Normandy? Um, Himmler was the uh, head of propaganda. No, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fuzzy it's, on that one. It's a battle I'm never, I'm never good. I'm never good. I'm never good with the D Day and the this. Yeah, so what's D Day? That's the next question. D Day is where they storm the beach. What beach? Um, Omaha, 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 Nebraska. No, o o steaks. O <laughs> is it? Is it o Omaha? I don't know. It's a beach. Oh, I'm okay. going to Omaha. The Battle of the Bulge refers to what? Oh, it's it's uh, Stalin and Churchill had a weight bat, bat like a weight, <laughs> a weight loss battle, right? Uh, who would lose yeah. first? Yeah, we'll send you vodka like, if yeah, you yeah, win. And yeah, <laughs> they were just like this. I'm fasting every third day. <laughs> Um, okay. okay, when did the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki occur? Uh, at the very end of the war, and I, I'm always fuzzy on this year. I think it's 1945, um, mm. and they sort of were, were at a full stop on the end of the war. How many people died in those? Oh, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to say Japan had lost the most lives. Now I'm going to switch it to Japan. I'm going to switch it to Japan. Okay, we'll let you switch it. Um, uh, oh, a uh, million people. And why were those cities targeted? I don't know if there's... Um, I, I've, I've always been a bit hazy on this, to be honest with you. Um, 
Uh, I feel that there, there, there were probably cities that had, when, whenever something was bombed, it was always something they may have had a lot of factories where they made muni- uh, ammunition or, or what have you. Mm. It's like if you, if you go to England, Birmingham, I've been told, is the second biggest city in England, in, in, in the UK. Um, it's not that beautiful. And I know there's Birmingham people sitting at home right now going, oh, come on, it's a lovely place to go. <laughs> but that's where they made most of uh, the ammunition and stuff like that. So it was meant to be architecturally this stunning place, but it was bombed so much. And then they sort of rebuilt it in the 60s. And so they have some sort of shonky sort of 60s and 70s architecture next to that sort of Gothic British architecture that you used to with the fine masonry and all that type of stuff. Um, so, but they did that because of, they had, they built so okay. much, uh, so you think that's why um, I think it's army yeah, stuff yeah. was there. Maybe two more questions. I'm what, probably wrong on that what, one. What, I'm quite embarrassed. What was the last battle of world war two? <laughs> okay. Um, last great. Ba- okay. So I know that I don't know what the battle was called, but I know that the, the way they really lost the war was, um, Hitler invaded Russia in the winter, and they just weren't prepped for that. So I'm going to say it was the Germans versus the Russians. Well, then there was other things. They were bombing Berlin and all that type of stuff. We, me and you, we've actually been to where Hitler's bunker was. We've been to it in Germany. We've, we've yeah, stood out front. It's just a condos now. It's a, it's a basically <laughs> it's basically a council estate, but it's, it's right dead in the center the center of town. And um and and there's like a small little sign that's like eh, this is where it was it's fading. See, this is why I it's always this yeah. is why I always um whenever you get um a statue <clears throat> being taken down in America and Americans will go like this. Well, if you take these statues down, you're taking away history. How are we remembering? There is nothing, nothing in 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 Germany that. Ha- Old, old Nazi memorabilia yeah. or a statue or whatever like that. And somehow we still remember. Yeah. So, <laughs> somehow we still find the way to recall these facts, you know. Wait, um, this is the last question. Which was the first Axis power to surrender? Okay, so what, well, obviously Germany wasn't the first because Hitler was still sitting there thinking it was all going to be all right. Um, I know that Mussolini was being dragged around the street. His mm. corpse was being dragged around. <clears throat> I'm going to say Italy. Italy, okay. And we I, we can expound on some of this stuff, but uh, zero through ten, Tom, how did uh, Jim do on his accuracy? Zero being the worst. worst. Yeah, ten's the best. Well, Jim, he was really going well there. <laughs> yeah. and then he, and then he, he was like the. I mean, he look. He seemed like the Germans on the Eastern Front for a while, and then he. <laughs> um. I would say that uh, I'd give him about uh, seven, six, six, seven. All six right, sounds right. pretty good. Well, the thing was, you didn't ask me some of the questions that I know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't. Mm. I, I gave you some pretty I got, easy ones. I got some good Hitler shit, man. Yeah, I figured you. <laughs> I got some good Hitler well, stuff. We'll probably you, do you an episode on Hitler. You, didn't, you didn't just do a lot of Hitler. I don't know about the Hitler. <laughs> How do you do in confidence? I think. Uh, I actually thought he did better than his confidence showed, but uh, I would give him a four on confidence. Oh, I thought Oof. he did pretty good because he was. He, See, I feel like I feel like going into it, he said, "I'm not going to know any of this yeah, stuff." Yeah, his yeah, confidence yeah. was down for me. I'm not, I'm, not very, for answers. Yeah. I'm not very good for dates and battles and all that type of stuff. I, was, I thought yeah. he did pretty good on the dates. Yeah, the actually. dates was pretty. Yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, you got all the years right. Oh, okay. It was the other stuff that was all terrible. Right. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so that's 11, et cetera. I'm going to give you five just because you're Switzerland. All right. Oh, you like all Switzerland. Right. Okay. We're <laughs> sitting around eating chocolate, making knives that we never use. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Tom. <Tonsa. laughs> like, why, why does the Swiss have army knives if they never go into war? It's a good, good point. point. <laughs> good point. He's like, fuck. <laughs> all right, Tom. So which event began World War II? Um, Jim said Germans invaded Poland. Was it that simple or? That is correct if you say World War II began in Europe, but that's correct. Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Tell us whoa, more. Whoa. Yeah. Well, you, but it, you, I've, I've argued that it began in Asia with uh, the Japanese inv- invasion of China. But I think a lot of historians will say World War II began in Europe, and so Poland. Oh, oh so the Japanese invaded China a lot in earlier? 1930, yeah, in 37, two years before. Oh, wow. Wow, that is how times have changed. Japan would never even think of invading China now. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it, it's, Lesson it, learned. It, it's, it's funny how all those three countries, the Japanese, the Germans, and the, and, the, uh, and the Italians, are all sort of 
like cutesy sort of people like, hey, we make sports cars. <laughs> and, oh, have you tried Snoodle? Oh, we're German like this. Like, hello, kitty, we're going to dance in funny Hiroshima outfits. And we're like, you three are adorable. <laughs> it's so true. You three are adorable. And the people we were with, Russia and Germany, oh, gosh. <laughs> were we on the right side? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> um, so I asked him what the treaty was. From World War One, that laid some of the unrest that would later explode in the World Correct. War II the Treaty of Versailles. So, so what did that? What, what is that? Yeah. Why, why did that? Ha- what, what's the like? What happened there? That's what I don't. Well, know. There was a Paris peace conference where they um, Woodrow Wilson, our president, went over and sort of masterminded that. But um, it turned out that the French and the British wanted the Germans to pay for the war. The Americans said, you know, nobody's responsible for it. Let's move on. Let's create a new kind of peace. We'll create a a League of Nations, which was sort of their earlier United Nations and everybody will get along. But the Germans and the, excuse me, the British and the French, especially the French, you know, have suffered a lot. And they stuck the Germans with a huge bill called reparations mm. um, and said the Germans were guilty for the war. Um, and so it 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 created uh, it, it hurt the economy. The Germans really couldn't recover for a, lo- a long time. Then, the, you know, 10 years later, roughly the Great Depression hits. Um, so, uh, and when Hitler rose to power, he was able to point to the Versailles Treaty saying we got famously stabbed in the back, that we should never have surrendered on November 11th, 1918. We should have kept fighting because we had surrendered on the basis that it was going to be a fair and just peace. Mm. And it wasn't for us. See, um, see, I know about the rise of Hitler and how he got into power. And I was waiting for those ones. I was, <laughs> I was going to be all over that, like a fat kid on a cupcake. I was, yeah. But you never. That's, uh, that's got to be a terrible bill to get in the mail for the war. You're like, you open it up, you're like, oh crap! I'll, I'll tell <laughs> you more <laughs> uh, I'll tell you a little, a quick little story, right? So when I was in high school, uh, I did history, and there was um, there was an exam, and you know you've got to sit there and you see you're in that room yeah. with all the kids. You know, yeah, they're all there in this big room. It's like the final exam, and you're all scribbling down your answer, and you get to pick a few questions, and you get to pick one that you're going to write an essay on. And the, the, one of the essays I had to write was, how did Hitler rise to power and gain the confidence of the German people, right? And so I'm there going, oh, because people were very upset about the war and all that type of stuff and the economy was in the toilet. And so he came in with nationalism and then he gave, he gave, he gave people jobs, building the Autobahn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'm going as good as I can. And, the, and then I'd written down everything I thought I ri- could write, Right. And I'd done like two pages and every kid around me was like page seven or eight or something like that. And I, I was out of stuff. I was out, right? And so I was like, oh, fuck, right? So I wrote on the top of page one, I wrote page one, and then I wrote page two. And then I wrote page five on the next page. And I went, <laughs> and in conclusion. <laughs> oh, like you had lost the other day? Yeah, Hitler was blah, 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 blah. Right? I signed the three pages. Then when they made a staple the pages together, I stapled them and then I ripped that last uh, page off and the second page. So all my pages were loose when they came in. The school board of Australia believed they had lost two pages of my good work <laughs> <laughs> and they gave me the average score of a student across the state, which is the best mark I ever had. <laughs> Oh. We gotta find those pages. There's brilliant no, shit no, in there. I, I since I obviously didn't tell my parents or anything. I told my dad many years later, and he was like, "You know, I reckon that was almost smarter than knowing the information." <laughs> He's not I'm, wrong. I'm with him. I was yeah. like, "That's fucking That's so brilliant. smart." Yeah. Uh, well, well, thanks to Adolf. You know. <laughs> I had some juicy stuff in those two pages that they lost. <laughs> it was some of my finest work. It's when I really got going. Well, it's painting. He oh, liked okay. the color blue. <laughs> what was the last major attempt at a peaceful resolution with Germany prior to the outbreak of World War II? You said you didn't know. You I don't know. know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, didn't know that one. So what that would you- that would probably be the famous Munich Pact of 1938, yeah. where, where the French and the British prime ministers came to Munich to. And they agreed to divide up Czechoslovakia, give give the German speaking part of Czechoslovakia to Ger- to Hitler, right? In appeasement, that was the height of appeasement. Yeah, yeah, giving them a bit of a, a country that they don't own is a fairly good deal. Yeah, but they didn't take that. No, no, there was a war. Well, for us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Not only did Hitler take it, Hitler took it, but the next year he took all of Czechoslovakia. 
Oh, so. he did take it, and then he just he, he then he just went. All right, I go. I, I find it bizarre. Uh, like it's so mental that that any time in history where they go, oh, one group decided they're going to take the world. It just yeah. seems like a very because the Brits did it, and they so the Third Reich. Correct me if I'm right. The Third Reich, the First Reich would be. Uh, the Romans, then the British, and then it would be the Germans would have been the Third Reich. Or am I saying that completely wrong? I think the Reichs refer to the Germans. Right, but it doesn't talk about people who have run the world before that. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the Romans did a pretty good job. Yeah. So what was their first two Reichs then? Uh, well, I guess it was when they unified in 1870, oh. uh, the Germans, under the Kaiser, right? Mm. Um, Ka- Kaiser Wilhelm. Yeah. I like Kaiser Rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and the Dutch always, you, you said the Romans, the English, the Dutch always get left out of there. Like they didn't well, do anything this is, wrong. This is the they, thing. they tried to take over the if world. If you go to Holland now, they're just like this. Oh, and then the Germans invaded us. It was a very easy invasion. They walked in and people were clapping on the side of the streets and all that type of stuff. It, what, they didn't fight. They didn't push back very much. Am I correct in saying that? Or am I going to get some angry Dutch people? You probably will, but but yeah, it's very flat because you didn't invade. Yeah. Um, so what countries were involved? Uh, Jim said Australia was a huge part. Huge. Good. Yep. <laughs> very, good. very good on all of those, though he didn't know the name of the good guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They called him the latecomers. Oh, the Justice League. Fuck. Yeah. Know that one. <laughs> now, what, those, those would be the allies. The, oh, the allied yeah. power. Allies. <laughs> Oh, I always thought just the word ally was just sort of used like we're all allies. I didn't know that's what we called ourselves. I don't know. I don't know if that word exists. Is that word? Yeah. Um, it was technically that that it's correct. I mean, they were the allied powers of the United Nations. We, we actually did not have an alliance uh, with any of those countries. Um, we hadn't had an alliance since the one with France in the Revolu- American Revolution. And when you say so we, 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 we're talking about America? The yeah. United States. Okay. But they were sort of called the Allied Powers or the United Nations later in the war. Uh-huh. Did Germany think of themselves as the ally- Allies? No, no, <laughs> they were the Axis. That was my. That was that was much more, you know, formidable. Now this might be a silly question, um, because because hi- history is what it is now, and we all know that the Nazis were the bad guys, and we know now about the the um, <clears throat> the concentration camps and. Um, okay, so Hitler won Time Magazine Man of the Year before the war walked out. The, the, the war was uh, the, the Olympics had been held in Berlin. Um, how in in the Allied countries was there much support or any support for Hitler, who they thought he's doing the right thing over there? Um, I don't know if you know. Besides the German German Americans who appreciate him, I don't think people you know, liked Hitler, but they did appreciate what he had done in the, in the great depression. You know, the Germans came out of the depression much earlier than we did. We, you know, World War II brought us out of it. So there was a respect for Hitler and, you know, guys like Joseph Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's father, who was ambassador in England, basically told Roosevelt that we ought to get on the right side here because Hitler's going to overrun the world. He's going to win. Wow. Right. Well, win. The, the King of England, the one before the sure. one with the stutter, he was going over there visiting him. They, he thought Hitler was all right. He was hanging out with Nazis. Yeah. They yeah. pronounced it Vinza. <laughs> um, what is Auschwitz? I asked Jim. He said concentration camp in Poland. A lot of Jewish people were killed there. Um, we good. Well, not yeah. just not just Jewish people. There was also homosexuals and other different uh, minority groups that they just, they deemed as un Aryan or, or or against the German state. And is that that was the largest concentration camp Auschwitz? That's. It was one of them that, and, and it was different than Dachau in a way, because Dachau was, uh, had a lot of political prisoners. Auschwitz really was the Jew, you know, shipping the Jews, homosexuals, as Jim said, and others to kill them. That, though, so Auschwitz really was a killing camp. I mean, that was really late. The Germans had perfected it by then. Some of these other were, some of these other were, were like, you know, uh, people who had opposed Hitler, politicians who'd oppose Hitler would go to Dachau, though they had their killing too. Right, but we now as Auschwitz that really Birk, Auschwitz Birkenau, which was the women's side of it, perfected the gas chambers. You know. And were all the concentration camps in Poland, or they were um, when the Germans invaded Poland and then into the into the Soviet Union? That's when they started setting up those camps because they didn't want to ship those. You know, they were very efficient. The Germans they didn't want to they didn't want to ship all the Jews of Eastern Europe 
all the way back to Germany. So you set them all up there. So Bergen Belsen, you know, there were there were a lot of them, um, Jelmnowitz and uh, but Auschwitz is the most famous. Mm. Um, because those exist, I always, this is not a question we ask in here though, but as like people that are Holocaust deniers, like if, if all that evidence exists there, like, how does that, like, why did, I don't even understand the, the motive behind that. Like with people like that, like what, you're, I mean, a, you're like asking a, why do people deny the Holocaust? <laughs> why are people believe in QAnon? Why are they? No, but that's different though. But QAnon's like a, just a made up thing that the, the, the Holocaust happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's tons of evidence. I mean, it's not like. It's not even, it's like almost offensive. I mean, obviously it's offensive to ask, but it's like, I just, what, what I don't you, even. You think it's almost offensive? <laughs> <laughs> it's very offensive. It's almost but, offensive that six million but people. No, but I just, I just mean like, I don't, it, with, there's places where you can still visit where it happened and stuff. Oh, I, I've, I've been there. It's, uh, some it's, people are it's stupid. Quite a, quite a harrowing. Okay. Should we kill these people that are. <laughs> yes, uh, we, should, we should kill them. Uh, um, all right. What happened at Pearl Harbor? When was that? Uh, Jim said all the battleships were stationed there and they were bombed, unannounced by Japan. They killed several, several people. He said several people. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. They killed a lot. It wasn't just battleships. It was also aircraft carriers and stuff yeah. like that. You know, there, there was, there was. All- 1941 was the year you said too. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so there were no aircraft carriers there. Okay. Uh, American aircraft carriers. Jim, you alluded to the fact that some people believe there was a conspiracy that the Americans knew they were attacking. That's, that's pretty much debunked now. Uh, but it was very fortunate that the four American aircraft carriers were out at sea somewhere. Well, one was back, a couple of were back in repairs in California, and one was on maneuvers. Uh, that would have changed the war if the Japanese had found those uh, and bombed those. Well, um, how, how have they debunked the conspiracy? Th- like, like, like. I've always been told that like some there was some generals and stuff like that 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 have said that this attack might happen. It's going to happen. And it's similar to 9-11. There was some intel that this sure. might happen, but I'm I, I imagine they didn't know the date or when or where or whatever, but the J- Japanese were building a, a air force to do something. Absolutely correct. And and um uh they knew there was going to be an attack. The, Amer- the American intelligence knew there was. They just knew it was going to be in the Philippines, though. Mm. Nobody dreamed that they'd come across the Pacific in in the winter or almost winter. Um, and 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 there were when that fleet came across secretly, um, it was detected by a few merchant ships. But you know, in real time, Roosevelt was getting hundreds and hundreds of cables on his desk. Um, so you know, so was the Army and Navy. Um, they were unprepared. Um, hard to imagine that an American president would let, uh, you know, Americans be sitting ducks, you know, and and sacrifice that many lives. And, you know, up, above all, too, we're always shocked when there's surprises. We're so shocked by 9-11, you know, because we're so smart. How could how could a 9-11 happen? How could a Pearl Harbor happen? How could the Israelis allow the Yom Kippur or the Egyptians to surprise attack? Mm. Um, you know, we're always, how, how could we be surprised by a pandemic? Right. Yeah. I know. So, so there's sort of an arrogance there too, but I think historians have gone back into detail and said, yes, they should have known. And there were, you know, six, there were six investigations after Pearl Harbor. Um, and really just dug up that it was just laziness, neglect, you know, just oh, the usual. Oh, my experience in life, is, and uh, we talked about something earlier on in this podcast, but my experience in life is when people start going, oh, the government, this, the government, there was no moon landing, there was this, there was this, oh, the government are trying to record all your messages and all this stuff. And like, okay, maybe they're trying to do different things and all that stuff. But I know from having probably 20 different jobs in my life, almost everyone is incompetent. Right. It's, mm-hmm. it's more surprising to meet someone who's good at their job yes. than to meet someone who is bad at their job. And that goes right to the top, yep. right to the top of any corporation or anything like that. So so there was just people who, at the moment we've run out of gasoline on the East Coast because someone put a Roku in the side of a computer and now it's been hacked and now we have no gas for any cars over there because a guy wanted to watch CSI Miami, right? <laughs> that's not me, but that's, that's, a real, that's a real thing yeah. because people are fucking incompetent. Yep. Yeah, I used to work for the government. And, the, and forest work for the government people. <laughs> Imagine that. It was a county government, but we dealt with the state and federal, you know, it was environmental. So, but I can just tell you that there, there's no conspiracy things going on there. It's just a lot of people showing up like, oh, Mondays, huh? Oh, I, 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 had pro- I had a problem with my property tax because uh, they hadn't been sending me the bills. 
because uh, they didn't send it to the right address. It's my property tax. <laughs> yeah. You know the address. You're trying to charge me for that address. You know where to mail it. <laughs> fucking government. Fucking. And now you have to pay for their mistakes. <laughs> How many battleships were in Pearl Harbor that were destroyed? Or was it all of them when they were there? Or, yeah. yeah, almost all. Good question. God, I don't know. I've uh, got it. Six or seven, I think. Maybe more. And that um, was all of the battleships of the Navy? Or no, just there was still some other ones, other parts? There the were some others on the Atlantic fleet, too. But this was the Pacific fleet. These had been moved in to kind of, you know, confront Japan. Yeah. Uh, was the they, was the movie Pearl Harbor quite accurate? And, and w- w- I'm asking that because... Were there nurses as hot as Kate Beckinsale? <laughs> yeah, by and large, yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> accurate. Yeah, <laughs> oh, good. Uh, you know, you take the good with the bad. It was a tough time. But... Wait, so that was accurate at the end when they sent the bombers over there to do that surprise attack of our own? They like... got two planes up, two planes, correct? Well, those were the Doolittle bombers. Yeah. The do- the do- yes. Well, the Doolittle raid was was true, and I, and Roosevelt only did that as a morale booster. Yeah. Just to show that, and and really to told, show the Japanese, we're coming for you. Mm. We and we can do it whenever we want, but we're going to turn to Europe now and fight that war. But yes, that Doolittle raid was true. A lot of those guys had to bail out over China. Some of them got killed, uh, and it flew over Tokyo. The Japanese looked up. Japanese, you know, in living in Tokyo, looked up and couldn't believe. You know, they they waved. Mm. They they thought they were a Japanese bomber. Godzilla was, tried to swipe them out of the sky. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you I, know, I, one thing that's interesting too, you know, when you ask about battleships too, um, as Jim mentioned, the aircraft, this this became the aircraft war, the Pacific War. So battleships weren't obsolete, but they just weren't as important. Right. Um, they were they were massive, and the Japanese built some massive ones too, but really it was an air it became it was the age of the aircraft carrier, or at least came up. Yeah, I, I was I was mentioning yesterday when we were talking about my grandfather fought in World War II. He was at the very end, he was a tail gunner in a in a B seventeen, yeah, and oh. it was called French dressing. Was the name of the plane? I and I have a fo- I couldn't find a photo of it, but but it was at the end, and I don't think he went on any mission. I think he got to England, and then they were like wars over pretty much at the end, and came back. But you were saying that that would have been very dangerous. As yeah. I mentioned to you, that was one of the most dangerous, and, and it didn't matter if you were a gunner, a pilot, navigator. These guys, these guys really lost their lives. I mean, again, as I told you, at one point, they were saying there were more British and Americans killed in the air war than, you know, landed on Iwo Jima. Americans landed on Iwo Jima, which, which is looked at as the horror show mm-hmm, right. um, for the U.S. Marines. Wow. So very dangerous. Um, who proclaimed December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy? You said the guy in the wheelchair. I he said had, Roosevelt. Holy, oh, Roosevelt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I always think that... Theodore, that was a cousin, you know, a distant cousin. It was Franklin, but you got that right. Yeah, I always get mixed up Theodore and Franklin. I, I, yeah, Theodore, Theodore's whose teddy bears are named after. Mm-hmm. That's why they're called teddy bears. Did you know that? Oh, really? <laughs> he wouldn't shoot a bear. Yeah. And so they started manufacturing this thing like he was a big softie and called them teddy bears after Theo, uh-huh. Theo Teddy, and that's why they're called teddy bears. I know that my, 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 mother, my mother collected teddy bears, so that's, that's a thing that I know. I mean, I know being a collector of teddy bears is called an arctophile. There you go. There you go. Dinner party fact. Dinner party fact. Um, (laughs) Archaeopteryx. It is funny. It says, a date which will live in infamy. Like, that's like a famous quote, but what else is he going to say? December 7th, 1941. A date where some bad things happened. Like, of course. Pretty bad day. Yeah, not a good day. Several (laughs) people died. (laughs) Several people. Um, What country lost the most lives in World War II? Jim said mm-hmm. China, then he switched it to Germany. No, I but no, to, I probably to Germany, then switched to Japan. I switched to Japan because of the bombs. All, all three incorrect. Ah, what about collectively? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was the Soviet Union that lost about half of the lives lost in World War II were Soviet lives. Wow. A wow. lot of those civilian. Again, you know, World War One. I, I think it was like 20% of, of the deaths were civilians. World War II. Tremendous. I mean, two thirds of the lives lost were civilian, Oof. and we, you know, we still don't know. I mean, in Britain about this too, but we're, and now it's upwards. I, I had predict thought there were about sixty-five million died. Some historians now are saying about eighty million people died. I mean, people were vaporized or just disappeared. You know, but yes, the Soviets after the war it was estimated about twenty-seven million Soviets. Died. Wait, so there's eighty million total in the whole war? 
Yeah. That, that, they think that, you know, this varies. Some believe it's 50, some believe 80, but yes, total war deaths now has reached upwards of 80 million. And then I think, I think it's probably more like 65 million, but you know, and, two, and how many of the were civilians again? You said two thirds, two, two thirds of the deaths in world war two. Whoa. That's crazy. Zero yeah. civilian deaths for Americans though. Right. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and, and, and if you think about the Soviet side too, if you think of the Germans, Jim is right too on the Eastern front, which we don't talk about as much as we do the Western front, but you know, four out of five Germans who died in the war and the soldiers died on that Eastern front, at the hands of the Soviets. So that's, you know, it was, it was brutal. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was the battle of Normandy? Jim didn't know. Yeah. I forgot the name. Well, he didn't know the, the, the D-Day. So the Battle of Normandy was the D-Day landings and then into, you know, the France, the invasion of France and the opening of the Western Front. Or the D- second. D-Day, that's half a point right there. D-Day. <laughs> talk to him, talk to Tom. Uh, him. <laughs> He's a professor. So the Battle of Normandy, so D-Day was, they stormed the beaches of Omaha, I thought. Well, the Omaha is one of the four beaches. That was a beach that the United States stormed and that was the worst of it. That was the, the toughest, but there were other sword in Juneau, the Canadians and British. Uh, um, there were, there were four other, there were four beaches total, but Omaha was one. Yes. That was a D-Day landings. And the Australians stormed Bondi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's got to suck to have fight a war on a beach. You're like, oh man, it must be rather having a drink on this. Right. Well, it's out. just also sand. And it's hard, like, much harder to walk I'll, in. Okay, no, so sand I, in your boots. He, here's a, here's a, a little bit off topic, but this is what I do. Um, <laughs> I was watching Mythbusters, right? <laughs> and Mythbusters reckons that if you are underwater, you can't get shot. And they put like a big block of jelly underneath, like silicon, under the water. They had shotguns, boom. And as soon as the bullet hits the cold water, the bullet just breaks into parts because it's so hot and it comes so fast. If you're about three feet underwater, you can't get shot, right? Mm. Mythbusters. Uh, fucking saving Private Ryan. Everyone's getting <laughs> shot under the water. Uh, I, it lost me a bit. <laughs> Were people getting shot underwater? Like, I, I, I don't know. You well, probably... People died then that day, though. Oh, yeah. no. If you stick your head up, eventually you've got to stick your head up. Yeah. Right? You can't just stay under there the whole time with a straw going, I'll just sit this war out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that, that, that was one of the horrific things. The bullets would go pew, underneath and the blood and all that type of stuff. But it, was that fairly accurate, the, uh, the Saving Private Ryan? Would that be the movie that was the most accurate Very depiction? Bad. Very accurate. Although, you know, most of the people who landed at D-Day, if they died in the water, drowned. Uh, because they're, you know, especially with the Americans, were unprepared to carry 60 to 80 pound back packs. Mm. No, and jump off these these boats. So, but yes, in fact, um, I saw that film first with some veterans who had to get up and leave, who oh. had been at D-Day and couldn't. They said the sound was so realistic, Damn. Oh, man. They just couldn't stand it anymore. Yeah, I remember reading that that veterans had a tough time. That World War yeah. II veterans had a tough time watching that movie. So, yeah, um, uh, the Battle of the Bulge refers to. Uh, Jim didn't know this either. Yeah, he said it was a weight loss battle between Stalin me and my and brother are having one at the moment. We, <laughs> we text each other about once a week and we give our weights. And, um, it is offensive that it, they, they still use that term, the Battle of the Bulge, yeah. when they do like ads and stuff. But I'm I'm assuming people died in this. Yeah, yeah, no, the Battle <laughs> of the Bulge is no good. Yeah, it was the push of the uh, Allied forces into Germany, and then Hitler, uh, for some reason, um, decided he would focus on the Western Front. And, and not the Soviets who were racing toward Berlin. And he pushed the Americans and British and Canadian forces and probably some Australian back into a pocket um, that bulged out. It sort of pushed Americans. You know, it was December 1944. It looked like we were the war was going to end. We we're going to race into Berlin. And the Germans resisted and pushed us back. Mm. So it was a, that in December, January. It was over by January, but it was very brutal. Very disappointing, but very brutal part of the war um, as the Germans sort of. And, and Hitler believed that he could push them. He always thought the Americans were soft, could push them back all the way to the English Channel and open up Rotterdam and Amsterdam again, too. That opens up a question. Why did uh, I say a lot of things about Americans and I have a lot of opinions on Americans and I myself am an American. I have an American child and everything. I, I, 
there's a lot of names you can call Americans, but I would never call them soft. They are a scary bunch of people. <laughs> if uh, all you, you got to do is watch you all stand up at a baseball game and sing God Bless America and not take your hat off in right. time to know that you're in a fucking world of pain. Um, why did Hitler think they were soft? You know, they'd come into the war late. They hadn't done well in North Africa. The Americans did, were fast learners. Uh, but it was really the British who kind of taught them a lot of the, you know, how to fight. Yeah, Americans were as tough. And if you just look at the Pacific War, uh, it was tough too. But Hitler, Hitler didn't have a whole lot of respect for the United States. It was a mongrel nation of immigrants. Um, he thought they were corrupt and, you know, uh, weren't ready. You know, and interestingly too, it's kind of getting off to topic, but at the Battle of the Bulge, there have been studies done of the Americans shooting back at the Germans. Well, seven out of 10 Americans did not shoot back at Germans. Uh, they either put their rifles in the air or couldn't shoot. They're paralyzed with fear, which mm. was pretty, which is very typical in warfare. Very yeah. typical. But I think the Germans realized that some of these troops weren't as seasoned. As by, you, you needed to get those boys from Kentucky and Tennessee. Right. They knew how to shoot and kill. Right. Yeah. But, but, a lot, but a lot of uh, the Americans were not as veteran. Not as veteran troops. No, they're just Canadian, uh, Californian kids that are like, right, yeah. oh no, the thing. Oh man, Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> when did the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki occur? He said 1945. I think that's right. Correct. Correct. How many people died in those? A million people, he said. Not correct. Yeah. Um, initially, um, for Hiroshima, about 85,000 died, um, Nagasaki less radiation after it, you know, then you had another 100,000 or 150,000 more. But, you know, the fire bombings in March of 1945 of Tokyo killed uh, 150,000 or so, much more than the uh, than the atomic bombs. Oh, so so why don't they get a bit more press? Is it just because it was the only time he dropped atomic bombs or? Yes. Yes. It was a new, obviously a new kind of weapon. And, and then the Japanese surrendered right after it. Right after that it wasn't the sole reason they surrendered. Um, they really surrendered because the Soviets broke their neutrality pact and invaded mm. China and Manchuria. And so now the Japanese realize we're screwed. We're getting bombed from the Americans in the Pacific. The Soviets are coming at us from Asia. It's over. But the atomic bombs were a shock. Uh, although, you know, again, it's it's unclear how many in the Jap in the Japanese military or government knew what they were. You know, right. it, was, it was so new. So when you were saying about like it, it, back to the Americans and them being soft and all that type of stuff, what was Hitler's plan for America? Was he to invade that last, or was was he, or did he just really want Europe and Asia, or did he have plans for countries like Australia, Canada, and America, or was were, were they just going to? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I think he thought England, as you said, would fi finally fall in line. Um, he wanted resources in Latin America in the hemisphere. Likely, if the war had dragged on and he had so dominated, uh, perhaps he would have had more support in the United States. But I got a feeling he never thought that he could invade the, the United States, or it would be decades before that would happen. His real, his real concern was defeating the Soviets. He really hated the Russians and the communists. I'll, t I'll tell you, uh, uh, well, I think an adorable little story. I, me and my wife, we met on a dating app and the first time uh, we connected, we both swiped in the same direction for each other. Um, I, I, I lived in the UK for a long time. I'm, I'm a bit of an Anglophile. I'm very fond of British people. I like British culture, I like British music and whatever. And, um, and so the first comment, the first words that me and my wife ever said to each other were this, uh, she, she, we, we matched and I said, hey, uh, nice to meet you. I see you're from England. I love English people. And then she wrote back, you and Hitler have a lot in common. And I thought, <laughs> I, th I thought this chick's all right, man. <laughs> That's funny. I wouldn't have expected that from her. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the first thing she ever said to me. Um, uh, oh, why were those cities targeted? The Jim said there was a lot of factories that made ammunition there. Is that Hiroshima for sure was on the list? Uh, Nagasaki was the last on the list. Um, that for that second bomb, it was possibly going to be targeted. Kyoto was the target, and then it was such a cultural. If you've been to Kyoto, it's such a historic and cultural gem that uh, the Secretary of War who had been there, you know, said no. 
Kokura, the town of Kokura was the target for the Nagasaki bombing. Uh, the planes circled a couple of times and it was cloudy and still cloudy. And so they were going to run out of fuel. And so they said, we got to get out of here. So they started exiting the island and the clouds parted over Nagasaki. Oh, so it really came down to weather. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, Nagasaki. If it had been another half hour and earlier or later with the clouds, Nagasaki wouldn't have been hit either. Oh, the weatherman must have had a hell of a day that oh, day. God. Oh, it's a bit of a cloudy day outside. We're expecting clouds right from Monday through till Wednesday. Then it's going to clear up on Thursday. Oh, it's cleared up on Thursday here in Hiroshima. Get outside. Enjoy the sun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nagasaki was up. Uh, why and why didn't they bomb Tokyo? That would seem like they would just bomb Tokyo, or is that it had been destroyed in the fire bombs? It had been hit a few times, but not by atomic bombs. Oh, what yeah. they really wanted to show, they really wanted to hit industrial areas, and they also were worried that if they hit destroy Tokyo, who would surrender? Oh, and yeah. that would be the government. Too. Um, what was the last battle of World War II? Jim said, uh, Hitler invaded Russia in the winter, and they were just weren't prepared for that. Well, there was, there was things, oh. Didn't know for sure. It wasn't Dunkirk, was it? Dun Dunkirk that was really 1941. It. Dunkirk is 42. That was earlier in the war. Yeah. The last battle of the war was Okinawa. Was the American yeah. invasion in Okinawa? Uh, Miyagi. In uh, the spring of 40, in the spring summer 45, just before the atomic bombs were dropped. So wow. uh, okay, so so. So what, the, the Germans and the Brits had already stopped fighting. With the with the Japanese, just the last people to give up. Absolutely, the war. We just celebrated that, right? Well, a victory in Europe day is early is May eighth, nineteen forty five. So uh, and, and but Hiroshima was August of forty five. So uh, the war went for another three months. The treaty to end World War Two was signed on the battleship, the Missouri. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. That looked, there. That looked painful. Uh, yeah, yeah. It looked like I've, you were shitting I've, out an answer. I've been on because there was a couple of battleships. I've been on the spot <laughs> where the end of the war was signed off on the. Wow, where is that battleship? It, 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 it was. It, it was still in, still working, right? It was still a working yeah. battleship, and yeah. uh, it was in the harbor in Sydney, and they let people come in. And I was maybe eleven or twelve years old, and my brother took me out, and we actually stood. There's a little plaque, and a, I think a little table and with a dome or something on it um but I, I went i've seen the spot where they signed the end of world war ii and it was on the missouri was is, it, is it still is it still working that battleship is it still no i don't know I, I my guess is they i don't think they ever destroyed it but i don't know where it is that's yeah. a good question i think it probably does tours now Wait, so who where signs, it goes out for historical who covers. signs the treaty then who's there to sign the treaty uh there's japanese uh, uh military minister douglas macarthur Mm -hmm. for the for the american side um and it's you know famous photos of you know american sailors just hanging over the railings yeah, yeah. As it, uh, you know arrived and hitler nowhere to be found no hitler was hitler was in his bunker hitler yeah. was already dead by then yeah. right he, he, he yeah. was he was already his bunker with ava braun and uh with his burnt up single testicle now a lot of people there's conspiracy theories that Hitler did not burn in the bunker and all that type of stuff, that he escaped out to Argentina. I don't personally believe that, but that's the theory because we never got to have – it would have been wonderful to have a trial of Hitler right. or to even do sort of the Mussolini version of uh, dragging him around and uh, having a bit of a celebrationary thing with his body, but uh, he didn't give us the opportunity. Yeah, and uh, Jim mentioned earlier that when we were in Berlin – oh, man, it was right before COVID, so what are, the end of 2019 – and. You know, they still have that church right in the middle of where that Christmas market was that was bombed out, like the spire. Oh, yeah. And then where where Hitler, where the bunker was and where he died, there are like apartment buildings there, which would be kind of weird to live there, I feel yeah. like. And then right across the street is a huge Holocaust memorial, which is a really, um, it's really you walk, amazing. You walk way, through it. And yeah, it looks like it's really, I'm sure, you, I don't know if you've been there. I've but, seen that. Yeah, yeah. it's very Brandenburg Gate. It's right next yeah. to the Brandenburg Gate. So we we went through the Brandenburg Gate and there was a man busking yep. at the Brandenburg Gate. And me and Forrest mentioned this often. And what was the song he was playing, Forrest? Don't worry. <laughs> Be happy. <laughs> we're, like, we're like, oh, here we are. At the, uh, when you worry, yeah. your face will frown. <laughs> and that might bring everybody down. And I'm like, we're right next to bloody Hitler's bloody thing. Yeah. And the we're next to a, ho a Holocaust monument. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, he's dead. Don't worry. Yeah, that monument is so it's like all these pillars. 
And yeah. at, on the top, it looks like they're all at the same level. And you start walking and it starts sloping down uh, slightly. And then you're all of a sudden the pillars are like 12, 15 feet high. And then you're like in this maze of pillars. And it's really, it's really uh, interesting. It's, it's, but yeah, um, I just think it'd be weird it, to live there where Hitler is. But isn't each pillar, doesn't it represent so many deaths? Yeah, no, that's what I think. That's what it was about. I yeah. just walked through it. I didn't read anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it does. I have some pictures somewhere. Yeah, but it it, it was it was very uh, like uh, I still I yeah. still felt when I was in Germany and I met German people. Um, and, you know, we dealt with a lot of people there. We, I was we we were performing out there, so we met a lot of, of the crowd, etc. Um, I still feel like the people of Germany are still in a little bit of a funk all these years later. And they're still sort of like, yes, we did something wrong. And it's like, you don't even bring it up and they're sort of apologizing to you all the time. There's, there's still like a cloud of shame over that country that they, they still, they can't wash themselves enough to get it quite off. That's what. Yeah. That's, I mean, Hitler is a really dark state. I know, but that's the <laughs> vibe I just got. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it was quite odd. Yeah. It's only an opinion, by the way. That's not a fact. Okay. Well, then we'll give you a point for that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. yeah, You know, the other thing, too, is um, so years ago, uh, I did a festival with Jim in Austria, Meyerhofen, like a little village in Austria. And, you know, Austria is basically like Germany. They speak German and they're just, you know, it's just like. Hitler's from Austria. Yeah. yeah it's the same thing. Yeah. And there was, so we had to get a ride back to the airport because they were driving us back to Berlin was the closest big airport. And this woman was to pick us up in this van, the couple other comics and us. And so I thought I was supposed to meet at, or Jim's hotel, he was in a different hotel. I was supposed to meet there and I left my bag, which weighed a ton over in my, my hotel and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting at Jim's. And finally the van pulls up and this woman gets out. Remember? Mm. She was very angry at me because she had waited where I was and she had to lift up my bag. And she was just like two inches from my face, like speaking, yelling at me in German mm-hmm. <laughs> and spitting. And I, would go, I was like, it wasn't until now that I realized that, that how Hitler was able to take over because they're very scary. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the German language. Uh, is, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was, she scared the shit out of me. I was like, I'm so sorry. I was, I was like, what do you want? I'll surrender. I was, I was like, I'll take all my money. I was like, it's, 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 just, it's, it's one thing to have a woman yelling at you in English, but in German, it was terrifying yeah. at like seven in the morning and the whole ride there. I was like, Oh God, I'm not going to say anything. Sorry, sorry, lady. Yeah, it ain't the sound of music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 buddy. That's what Mozart w- wanted to write in not in German because it was a bit harsh for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which was the first Axis power to surrender? Jim said the Italian Mussolini was being dragged around the street in Italy. Cor- correct, dragged around the street and then put up on a meat hook. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's how they make out a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw a documentary it was like one of those ones like World War Two in color type of thing, and then they they, they were depicting the weeks after uh, the war had ended, and in places like France, they were really just um, now that they were back and free again, they were really torturing what they call Nazis or just German people in the street. They were. They were putting swastikas stickers on them and lining them up by the side of the road and shooting them. And it, it sort of when I watched the documentary, I remember thinking, oh, wow, we should have taken slightly a higher ground. We we won the war. Was that l- like just something that the documentarian was ju- just showing a minority of people were doing or was that t- a commonplace? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably re- re- referring to co- the collaborationists, right, the people who are yeah. who had worked. Um, you know, women would have their heads shaved if yeah. they had slept. German officers and things like that. Yeah. The French especially really took revenge on a lot of their citizens who did well in the war. Oh, they the were, war. they were, they were shaving women's heads in the square and hitting yeah. them and stuff like that, cutting their breasts. It was like really horrific. And then the documentary is like, well, you know, they lost. And you're like, holy hell, we should have, what's with, the, get out some baguettes and some fucking cheese. Do your <laughs> bloody French thing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, part of that also in seriousness is the French resistance. Talk about mythology. You know, everybody says, you, you know, that was so, they were so brave. They were brave. Most of the French resistance were killed. Germans found almost all of them. Um, you know, so when the war ended, you know, I think, again, the French took revenge because a lot of people died. Okay, this is, this is on topic and off topic. Uh, uh, the Great Escape now is one of my favorite films, and I'm sure you've seen the film. Fant- yep. Fantastic movie. Very inaccurate. From what I, like, so there's Tom, Dick, and Harry. There was the three tunnels. 
Um, but the American troops had already been moved out of that camp. There was no Americans in the camp uh, going to do the movement, but then they sort of went, oh, we got Steve McQueen. We have to keep him in here. And then they've got like, James Coburn and all these different – James Coburn played an appalling Australian accent, maybe one of the worst Australian accent in film history. Um, apart from that, there was one person who escaped or something like that. How accurate was that film apart from the idea that there was Americans in the tunnels at the time? Yeah, uh, I'm sure there are people who escaped, but I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, that's I'm going to take a pass on that. Uh, but, uh, good movie, yeah, though. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure uh, okay, how, sure. how accurate was Hogan's Heroes? <laughs> Extremely accurate, especially, you know. <laughs> I find that I find that so bizarre. So Hogan's Heroes probably came out in the 1960s. Let's say for argument's sake, 1965 was when they made Hogan's Heroes. So we're talking 20 years after the war ended. Where 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 have we got our wacky Afghanistan Iraq sitcom? When's that coming? <laughs> we've we've done more. We've done 20 years. Come on, give it to us. So Still we're... going on. Yeah, but I, I will be out of Afghanistan soon. Then, then the sitcoms come. I always find that because, like, now if you make a movie, I, I, I saw Gone with the Wind for the first time um, it, last week. I never seen it. It was my mother's favorite film, and, I, and so probably for that reason, I never saw it. And then me and the wife sat down and we watched Gone with the Wind. Um, it was made in nineteen thirty something, and um, it was about the Civil War. And I, it, it dawned on me now that that movie was more relatable to people from the civil war than a movie made now about the second world war that there's more yeah. time passed yeah. sure isn't, isn't that sure. interesting <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I like your idea the I, I, you know maybe guantanamo yeah. could be the like guantanamo vice or something uh, like that yeah, yeah. yeah I've, got, I've already got the name for the sitcom guantanamo hey yeah that's a good one that's a good one yeah <laughs> There actually was an Afghanistan war-based comedy uh, called 68 Whiskey. It was a couple of years ago. How did that Six, go? What? Clearly not well. What was well, it called? 68 Whiskey. Uh, you know probably what, some military terminology. You know what I liked about Hogan's Heroes is it was just like they all were having so much fun in the prisoner of war camp. They were sneaking in and out. Yeah, and the Hogan, Germans were dumb. Hogan was <laughs> banging like, like these really hot German Fraulein, oh. like, like these women that, that just worked for Klink. Yeah. Clinton. Yeah. And how many times were they going to like, you know, not escape, they would get out of the camp, but they wouldn't leave and they'd come back and they'd be like, you did it again. Like, <laughs> all good. <laughs> all right. So um, we've, we've gone off track a bit here. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, you know, I think we've learned everything there is to know about World War II. We, uh, we covered everything. Can we so. do another episode just on Hitler? I think I'll do better just on Hitler. We could do that. Yeah. So I can yeah. do all the Himmler yeah. and the thing and I can carry yeah. on about Mein Kampf. We, mm -hmm. we might have Tom back to talk about baseball. So. Oh, I yeah. love baseball. Yeah, so I think, remember his face. I, you'll guess that I've, one. Right? I've seen the Ken Burn documentary about four times. I think I, okay. I think I do well. I think I really would do well. But I think I, I think you do pretty good. But the history is, you know, I think you understand baseball. But the history, no, no, the history. I think I understand more than I understand baseball. I've watched that documentary. If you watch that documentary, it's everything you need to know. Yeah, it's everything you need to know. When you're at Red Rocks in September, I'll be teaching my class American history through baseball. So I'm going to have you. I'll have you as a guest. All right, oh, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll come along. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's going to be very <laughs> close to when my wife gives birth. So <laughs> so I don't know if I'm, I'm going to be allowed an extra free couple of days. <laughs> I've got to go lecture can, at a university on baseball. <laughs> <laughs> what? You can zoom in. Um, so uh, before we go, we have dinner party fact segment where we ask our guests to give us like a fact or something interesting that the listeners and viewers can take that they might not know or people might not know in general. About World War II. About World War II, God, there's so much. Yeah. Well, you can give us a couple if you want. How about this? Yeah. How about, how about this? Uh, you, I, you might know the term phony war. When the Germans invaded Poland, took it, right? They won. And then there was this long sort of lull in, the, in World War II uh, from really late September to, to March of 1942. What was, though, there, there was a battle. There was a battle in that phony war period. Obviously, you know, it was followed by the invasion of Norway and other things. There was a battle, though, um, um, right after, well, in a couple of months after Poland was invaded. Um, where was that? It was not in Europe and it was not in Asia. Right. The next kind of conflict between the British and the Germans. Mm. Not, <coughs> not in Europe, they, North, North Africa. Africa. Uh, uh, Scan not, Scan not Scandinavia? Scandinavian or Scandinavia. I don't know. Antarctica. 
In Latin America, it was called the Battle of the River Plate. It was Argentina. The, the Germans, the British Navy had chased German ships up the river. Uh, in Argentina? Oh, well, Argentina and Uruguay. <laughs> oh. and, they, and they had a battle, and the, and the British beat them. All, all the Nazis were ha- house hunting. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were down there. Is that true? Okay, no, I, no we're meant to end the podcast right no, here. You can, you can. But, but, but there's the, no rules. The, okay, um, is it true that a lot of Nazis escaped to Argentina? Is that a true thing or is that a bit of a, bit of a myth? It's true to, to Argentina and Paraguay. Absolutely. Um, I always am a little bit – I'm on the fence either way sometimes about like when the, you have people who are Nazi hunters and they try to track down some 90-year-old man and they, they want to – I agree with people who ran the concentration camps and stuff like that and the SS guys. And all you those agree stuff. with them or you agree that they no, should hunt them down? I agree they should hunt the SS yeah. and the con- – Just but, clarifying that because that's not what you said. If it's just like a guy who's like a soldier, I sort of think, well, they were indoctrinated into that you know what I mean? Right. Like it's very difficult if you were a twenty-year-old guy. Um, am I am I saying atrocious things right now, or is that? Yeah, well, that's a moral debate too. I mean, you're right. The Mengele, um, you know, remember Eichmann? Yeah. Uh, with, and the Israelis get him in Argentina. Mm. You know, that becomes a famous uh, movie. Uh, Mengele, the doctor. Yeah. There were a lot of ordinary Germans. Not only that, though, there were a lot of Germans, especially Germans, intelligence, military, that when the Cold War began, the United States sort of co-opted them and invited them to the United States. Mm. Um, so, you know, we kind of forgave. Well, we, we, we've got the, the rocket scientists that got us to the moon. You, you know what I mean? So if we could use them, we sort of kept them. And otherwise, you know, we didn't. Um, okay, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, this is d- one of my favorite topics, Tom. I really appreciate you coming say, on. Tom Zeiler, again, is his name. And the book, if you're interested, is called, Ni- he's written a lot of books, but Annihilation, A Global Military History of World War II and Unconditional Defeat. That's about the last two years of Pacific War. Um, but he's got a lot of other books, some on baseball. And, I mean, you can say those. I don't know where, where they would find links to all that. Do you have a website or is it social media? Where- if you have a website, they can look under Tom Zeiler at, or, or the University of Colorado and the history and, department too. Perfect. And, and we'll Tom, link that in the YouTube. Yeah, Tom Zeiler is, is Z-E-I-L-E-R is how you say it. Well, Tom, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We really appreciate it. We'll try to get you back for baseball, man. I, I want to talk about that, and it'll be easy for me to guess the subject. So that's what I'm down <laughs> for. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so, I'll say gun, Tom. Thank you for having me. Oh, on. No, any okay. any time, man. Um, so, uh, look, if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, you know, the Battle of the Bulge with Stalin and Churchill uh, comparing their weights, go, well, I don't know about that, and walk away. <laughs> Good night, Australia. <laughs>